All right, it's time for episode two of the Hard Knocks One Jets Drive recap. Uh, I'm Blakey Locks. I'm here with the Jetstream guys, Jesse and Connor. Episode two in the books. How are you guys feeling? Different. I'm great. Different. I'm feeling different than the first episode. It was All just right, a well, different. It was a different vibe. Yeah. Definitely. I liked it though. I liked the different vibe. It wasn't like as. Uh, it was like half of it wasn't as, you know, happy go lucky. Everything's good, you know, pie in the sky type, type of show. It was like, yeah, you know, we're like, okay, guys, like, you know, we had a shitty practice or something like that. And there's the two minute scene of Sala ripping him to pieces. I'm like, this is what we want to see. Also, one Jets drive doesn't give us the negative stuff. I want to see what else is what is going on when things aren't going well too. So I'm glad we got that this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, episode one was very much the Aaron Rodgers is here. It's the greatest thing that's ever happened. Everybody on the team is at an all-time high and confidence and everything with with Rodgers in the building. And this was, yeah, much more. There were some moments of that, and we'll get into everything. Um, but, yeah, there were definitely some, oh, maybe everything on this team isn't perfect, which obviously it isn't. No team, everything's perfect. So we want to see that stuff. We want to see – how this team, how the coaching staff, how everybody will respond because there are going to be moments throughout the season where you lose a game or uh, things are going bad in a game and how do people respond. So it's cool to see that stuff, honestly. Um, and uh, we'll get into all of it. Um, but big picture, what did you guys kind of think of the episode other than just the vibe? We we still liking what we're seeing? Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, I really thought that Sala established himself as the alpha dog this episode, you know, (laughs) Jesus Christ, like literally the lowest, the lowest like form of fucking sports talk radio. Apparently if you're Sala Kata, I think he's, he he thinks it was fake. It's like, it's uh, maybe, maybe he was just, no, 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 it was, it was, it was Tierney who thought it was fake. Tierney. Sala was like, that's what I I love. Yeah, you're right. Like literally like I could like, I can I can hear their pre-show meeting. Yes. You know, okay. Like, <laughs> Good cop, bad cop type thing. Yeah. Like, and Jesus Christ. He man. was just like, it, it was like, he wanted him to be more assertive. And then Salah goes out there and is assertive. Definitely what he's like when the cameras aren't. Recording. <laughs> he's just like, probably like that all the time. And he wants him to be more aggressive. And then Salah is more aggressive. And he's like, well, he's just doing that because we said we wanted to see it. It's like, you are giving yourself way too much credit my friend yeah. you think robert sal is listening to the fan not a chance no. in hell. <laughs> not a chance in hell you know what he's listening to he's not even listening to when he's on the segments with uh boomer and geo like he has he has, he has like what there. he has like what nine kids you know what he's listening to <laughs> the sound of silence yeah. all right or, like, uh, that's, uh, he doesn't or, even uh, listen to film he doesn't even listen to film with with, that's right. with noise no He's silent like, film. Silent, silent film. film. You guys yeah, that know guy, I love my silent film. <laughs> that guy hears way too much from his kids every yeah. single day that he's home. There's no way that he listens to any music or any <laughs> any radio. No, he's listening to the in, he's listening to the sound of silence and seeing the inside of his eyelids when he gets home. <laughs> yeah, he's either screaming at grown men all day, and then he gets home and there's children screaming at him all night. And then he gets his like couple of hours in like a dark room in his house somewhere where he's just in total silence watching the film from that day. And yeah. that's like his his dream scenario. No, this is <laughs> the only this is the only hard knocks recap show that Robert Sala listens to is uh, this one right <laughs> here. Of course. Um, of course. Because he respects our opinions. We're not gonna we're not gonna go hot takes. Hey. We're not gonna go we're gonna just hey, tell we it go like back. we saw it. We go back a long, long time with our good friend Robert. Our okay? good friend Rob, Bob Sala. Yeah. We are good friends. <laughs> no, See, I, knew I, was, I, I knew it was, it was Bobby from Michigan. I don't know about you guys, but you know, oh yeah, of we course, go way of back. Course. Me and him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that stuff was was cool to see with him because, like you you said, and it's kind of where this thing is coming from of these guys, which is bullshit, obviously. But like. Where it's is we do in like press conferences and stuff, like even when things were going bad at the end of last season, when things were going bad with Zach Wilson, like you see him in a press conference, he's not really a negative guy. He's very much like, you know, like 
we're going to do everything we can to get things back on track. Like he's very measured in his press conferences. Anytime he's kind of speaking publicly. So seeing this behind the scenes stuff of like, it's like he, you don't become a defensive coordinator in the positions he was in. If you're not the type of guy that's in there chewing people out, like Mm. getting into guys. So like, we knew that that side of him existed. Um, And so it was really cool to see that. Like, and when, the he's a holy line. back guy. Like, of yeah, course, he's exactly. literally. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, literally. Like, he's not, it's not, he, he's not just a hold me back guy when he's excited and happy. No, it's sure literally he's a hold... every second of the game. Like, yeah, like he gets, he's in, he's in a very intense guy. When he's, when he's happy, he's intense. When he's angry, yeah. he's clearly he's intense. Like, no, I, and he, the best part about like that rant wasn't like him being like, defense, you guys are great. Everyone knows you're great. We love you. And then the offense, he like he singles out who is doing well. He's like, it's not enough. We have like a two ten million dollar receivers. It's not enough. We have an offensive rookie of the year. It's not all enough that we have like these great running backs and a great quarterback. He's like, it doesn't matter. You could almost feel like I imagine he was like turning and looking right at the offensive lineman. He's yeah. just like, it doesn't mean shit if the big guys up front like aren't doing their job essentially. And that just must have been so awkward for the other like eighty percent of the room to just be like. All right, so we just we're all doing our job, but now he's just yelling at all of our friends over here. But yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was like... and S- Sala was I, maybe he was in one Jets drive, and maybe I, maybe I'm just everything's melding together the amount of Jets content I consume. But I saw an interview <laughs> with with Sala, and they asked him about Rogers and the whole like alpha like alpha dog thing and every and whatnot, and he was like laughing at it. He's like, man, like we came into the league at like the, the in the same year. You know, like we were like, we're like the, we're like very similar in age and where we are in our lives. Like, you know, Rogers is like, like he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. Of course, I'm going to take input from him. Like, I, like, it's the same as taking input from the 38 year old, like, position coaches that we have, you know, like, except this guy is like going to be in the Hall of Fame and he's going to be on the field also. It's like having an extra coach on the field. So, right. like, Sal is like, this is awesome. Like, I have another guy. He's not like, Oh, that's my job. I'm supposed to be the alpha dog. Like, no, this is like everybody's bought in. Everyone's like on the same page and helping each other. And the only alpha dog conversation that's happening is on sports talk radio and and like on YouTube and whatnot. Like, that's not yeah. a that's not a real like storyline in the in the locker room. Yeah, when we were kind of comparing last week Aaron Rodgers because we were talking about the Nathaniel Hackett thing and like, is he a good coach? And it's like, do we even need him to be a good coach or does he just need to be the guy that makes Aaron Rodgers happy? And then we were comparing that situation to Brady's first year in Tampa and how he went there, was rejuvenated, won a Super Bowl in his first year. And it was kind of similar with Byron Leftwich as the offensive coordinator in Tampa, where him and Tom Brady were like the same age, I think, mm-hmm. uh, or very close to it. Mm-hmm. And and Byron Leftwich, even though he's the coach, he's not going to pretend to like know more than Tom Brady does about playing the quarterback position in the NFL. He, the reason that they had a really successful partnership is I'm assuming because Byron Leftwich was just like sitting down with him and being like, Hey man, what did you see? What do you think? And Brady saying what he thinks. And then Leftwich being like, okay, let's go with that. And just kind of letting him do his thing, which I assume is the same relationship that these coaches have with Aaron Rodgers, where it's like, hey, man, we're not going to tell you what to do. Like, as long as you're in here working hard and doing everything you're supposed to be doing, which from everything we've seen, he definitely is. It's definitely more of a, a partnership as it as it should be. Yeah. And and his relationship with Hackett, it's very obvious that it doesn't even need to be like it, it doesn't even need to be said. Like it's it's immediately recognizable that they have a partnership, their relation like shitting on each other in practice and like rip ribbing on each other like they're friends is it it's not it's it's not even a coach player relationship as it is like a two friends collaborating on how they want to take out a defense right you know exactly. that it's a very unique situation where like you look at like i mean maybe leftwich and brady were friends before he got to tampa but i'm gonna assume like they probably weren't very close you know they probably knew of each other because they played in the league at the same time but like they weren't like Hey, like Byron, what are you doing for like Thanksgiving? You want to come come by? Like no, like that wasn't. And then like I know like Tom eventually like came to Tampa and lived at Leftwich's house or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Right. Sure. But like, you know, it's, it's a very unique situation that Rogers has with Hackett where like, they're just boys like busting each other's balls and calling plays and drawing things up in the dirt, you know, which is like football speak in the highest form. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like, it's also true, you know? So that's really, that's really like a unique situation. Like <clears throat> Bruce Arians was in his sixties, you know, and retired soon after Brady got there, you know, Salah's same age, you know, Hackett's very similar age. Like everyone's like kind of like on the same page here. There's no like hierarchy, uh, like in a normal situation, like Peyton Manning was absolutely doing everything for Adam Gase. You know, oh like, my God. The, <laughs> you know, like that wasn't a collaboration. That was like, oh, you just happened to be the offensive coordinator. Right. Congratulations on the salary, but I, I got I got it. <laughs> I got you know, I mean, that's like, what it is. That's what it is with Rogers and Hackett. It's not like I mean you've been saying it's just I think pretty sure I said this to you at some point, Jesse, when we were recording. It's just Hackett's not getting in Rogers' way. And that's what makes yeah. them that's yeah, what exactly. makes them both so successful. And mm-hmm. it's not even the fact that I think even if they weren't good friends, Hackett would probably understand that. He'd probably be like, what am I going to coach? What am I going to do? What, is, what am I going to see on the field that he's not seeing on the field that helps what we're doing here? doesn't make any sense. He's just like, I'm just going to get out of his way. Maybe I'll, I'll call the plays. I'll work with him and call plays and stuff like that. But what am I, yeah, I going to show him that benefits this team? There was, a, there was a moment, I think, in the episode where – Hackett was just like talking about um or maybe it was last week when Rogers was like joking with him about like are you called like you like you're calling a bad play or you called the fucking play or something like that on like a busted yeah a busted up like mm-hmm. play or something like that. So it's just he did it uh he did it last week and we talked about it and then he did it again this week. There was one which I don't think he was even playing. I think it was mm-hmm. during the preseason game when he was on the sideline, or maybe it was during one of the joint practices. Um, but it was in like real against the Panthers in some way. And yeah, there was one play and Rogers goes over and he's like, maybe now we know not to run that play from yes, that formation. That's what it was. That was yeah. practice. Yeah. That was yeah, practice. That was, that yeah. Was it was great. in the joint practice. I think. Yeah. And it's just like, he's just um, always learning. It's like, he's learning with these guys, like this new team. He's has got as much to learn in that sense as a lot of other guys. You know, he's, they were saying it in this conversation with uh, Bryce Young before the, like the practice started. He was just like, "Yeah." Bryce asked him, "He's just like, so what's it like being in a new place?" And he's like, "Well, you kind of know. I mean, you're in a new place too. We're both kind of mm-hmm. just like figuring this stuff out. It's like you know, you're in a certain place for that much time, and you come to a place like this, and yeah, it's just completely different. But yeah, I mean, he's certainly. Well, I like the fact that this this week, yeah, like wasn't all happy, glowing Rogers. We saw that, like he's out there and he's he's talking to uh McGovern about some of the snaps that he was getting. He's just like don't spin the ball to me. He's like don't do that. And he's just like just do this or do that. Do this, do that. And it's like I don't like when the ball spins when it comes to me. So like don't do that because it's just going to screw me up. And then like the next clip they show is like a snap that went over his head. <laughs> like, and, and I think that was a different guy also. But that was a Schweitzer. Oh, Schweitzer. 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 How many guys? Schweitzer. Schweitzer. Which I don't know why he's playing center. Yeah, yeah, I think there's. I but think I, anyone that's anyone on the offensive line that's like ever played center, they're all kind of like getting a crack give them a shot. Yeah, yeah, like so. I, 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 to your point also, Connor. Like it wasn't the happy go lucky Rogers episode. <clears throat> it, it, it certainly wasn't. Like we saw a different side of him this episode. Like a shit talking. Um, like more of like not even shit talking. More of like how he actually is. You know, in the beginning of the first episode, he's like, oh, I'm going to give you guys some good sound today, right? Right. This one, we, this one, it, it didn't feel like that, where, like, he was being intentional and, like, trying to, like, give good sound bites. Like, the, like Blake, what you said, maybe we'll learn not to run this play again. The, the tone that he used was mm-hmm. like, you fucking idiots, why are we right. not changing this play? Or him running up to that Panthers D-line coach and calling him a fat piece of shit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. just oh, to really, his face. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I wrote the quote down. He said, "Yeah, what was the what's quote? up, little? What's up, little bitch? You look fat <laughs> as shit." Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Oh my!" I, my jaw dropped. I was like, "Oh all my Panthers, god!" Like, or like all he the just said that on. He's like, "Oh, he's buying faux tarts now instead of pop tarts." Yeah, and he's just like, "He said, you said the next time I saw you, you're gonna be under 270. <laughs> like, 
like yeah they kept going into about his weight and... yeah he kept going about his weight i was like oh my god and then at the end he gave him a hug and he was like i love you buddy and I love you, like, man. I love like listen like a lot of people probably watched that and were like wow rogers is such an asshole that's just guys being dudes especially on football and 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 you know what and he is being an asshole but that's what guys being dudes are like that's just what like dudes do we just rip each other to shreds it was an ultimate dudes rock moment like, like girls, yeah. well, girls, girls, girls do it behind each other's backs. We just do it to each other's faces. You're We're just like, yeah. It, and then you, and then you're like, I love you, bro. And that's it. Like you know. Like, <laughs> then you move on, and then, and then you find someone else to destroy. You know, like that's. <laughs> and you can tell that's what Rogers likes because I know from stuff that like that's how Miles Teller is, who's like one of his boys. Like I've seen stuff with Miles Teller where like people think Miles Teller is kind of a dick, like, because he kind of acts that same way, like kind of sarcastic and like, will kind of like bust your balls, but like, is probably a good, good guy at the end of the day. And it's the same thing we were talking about with Hackett. Like there was a moment with Hackett in this episode where uh, Quinn and Williams was getting after everybody, like being an absolute beast and Hackett just looks over and he goes, Hey Q, Q. And he just gives him the (laughs) finger. He's just ripping his offense apart. And so it's just the type of, those are the type of guys that Aaron Rodgers like guys that yeah. he can probably just be an asshole with, but they know that it's just like, it's not serious. And, Maybe and, and Rogers, R- Rogers was shitting on Quinnen too. He was like, Oh, 10 sacks. And then he, oh, goes, yeah. then yeah. he goes, then he goes, that's 11. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe my favorite Rogers moment was during the preseason game, like towards the end. And when, uh, I said Koontz, I don't want to say Koontz. I don't want to say uh, the other the other way. Yeah, it's Koontz. Yeah, it's Koontz when he got his touchdown in the preseason game, and he and it was like after I think that uh, Leif Schreiber was like after a rough week in practice, it was nice that he got a touchdown or something like that, and he had run the wrong route. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and Rogers must have said he's like he must have said six or seven times he's just like got the touchdown but ran the wrong route, got the touchdown but ran the wrong route. He's like you might have, this might have been like an amazing moment for you. This is your first NFL touchdown. Get it together and run the right route. If, like, if you're out yeah, there playing yeah. with me, I expect the best from you. Even if you get a touchdown, I don't give a shit. I was like, that's him. That's great. That's what you want to see. He's like, he's every single player that plays with him has always said the same thing. He's just like, he's the, he's a super good dude when he's off the field, you know, but when he's on the field, He's lasered in. He's the guy you want out there for a reason. Like, and that's what the greats do. Brady, notorious for screaming at teammates yeah. on the sideline. We've seen it so many times in video. Yeah. You know, just absolutely laying into his offensive line or literally anybody like on the team. Like he didn't care. Um, and the greats do that. I've seen video of Peyton yelling at people, being like, "What are you Big doing?" Time. Big time. You know, like, and I love that Rogers is good enough and we have like we have somebody that's good enough to do that uh, and and we certainly fucking do <laughs> yeah no i mean yeah it's definitely what you want from your quarterback um so those we kind of just been going through some of our our favorite moments but i did make another uh kind of just timeline if we want to run through yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the yeah. episode and hit on stuff the episode started with uh o's not oz o's the mentalist um and I, th- I feel like most people have seen him on stuff by now he's done stuff on mm-hmm. like monday night football with different nfl teams he's done stuff on like college game day with college teams uh, he's gone into like barstool and done stuff with them like he just kind of goes around to anywhere he can get like a group of people where he can just like do his thing and people will go crazy um and i don't know it's it's like the type of thing when I see that I just like don't like to think about it too much because I, it'll just like upset me like <laughs> because I I have no idea like like card tricks and stuff like I get that like it's cool if you can do it but like I was like I know you're pulling something on me somehow but like with McCall Hardman I think it was like saying who are who do you think you'll play in the Super Bowl and what will the score be and he turns the thing around and it's 49ers 31 21 and he got it it's like I I can't even like think too much about how he did that it, unless it's like totally rigged, which I don't think it is. That uh, that one, just that one made me think it's like that one and the Michael Carter goldfish. One. Yeah, the goldfish. That, so the Hardman and the Michael Carter one was like that made me think that he just like pulled them aside in like the hallway beforehand and was like, "Here's what's gonna happen." 
which just wouldn't have been fine. The, the well, the Michael Carter one. The, we're getting the reactions from the talent. players is what you want. Yeah. So, yeah. And like seeing Carter, like when Michael Carter, when Michael Clemens saw it, he's just like, he's like backing yeah. up out of his seat. Like that's worth it. But the Rogers one with the goldfish, that one was like, all it right. had to have been when his hands were together and he like he was like passing something out, between and he was like fiddling with it and putting a sleeve. I don't know, but that was crazy to the me. The best was the he... best was you couldn't see who it was. Like, but what if he picked a giraffe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been really good. So that was fun. It's a little team bonding type thing. And it seems like he tries to put somewhat of like a motivational message into it a little bit. But um, that's kind of what we, we opened with. Um, and then we, we started after that with a montage of some practice fights, which is always fun. And I think it's definitely a positive thing. I think if your team's not fighting in practice, then you're – not going hard enough and you don't have competitive enough guys. So that was fun to see guys going at each other hard. Somebody trying to fight Michael Clemens and we got a mm-hmm. shot of uh, Garrett Clemens, Wilson oh being God. on the sideline being like, I'm not going after Mike. Like if, <laughs> if there's a fight, I, I'm on whatever side Mike is on. Um, yeah. It's and not like, offense, dude, he defense. Was, he was railing on whoever, on somebody. Yeah. Clemens. I was like, Oh my God, why is anybody fighting this guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, Which is crazy. Like, he's not even the biggest guy on the team. Like, imagine, like, it was Beckton he was fighting. And or Solomon Beckton was Thomas, just like, or like, Yeah, Beckton was like, All right, like, enough. Like, you, but, you, you're cute, but I yeah, we're not fighting we, right now. I don't know who Clemens was talking to afterwards. Was it Rogers, maybe? He was just like, With like, the punch your, in the helmet? Yeah, he's like, How do your hands yeah, you was... punch the helmet? <laughs> like, he's like, yeah. What are you yeah. doing? He's like, That's how you break your hand. <laughs> like, yeah, it was Rogers. And he was just like, Ah, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's like fine. all right. <laughs> okay, okay. I Mike. saw Damian Woody tweeted. He was like, "All these guys like fighting and everything. Like, it's not worth it. I broke my hand once. It's not worth it." But Blake, I'm with you. I think that if your guys aren't fighting, maybe it's not worth it to them personally. But like as a team, I tell, I totally agree. Like, that you're not going to encourage fighting, but you're not going to like say no fighting because you know that competitive factor is a thing. Right. Right. Yeah, and it should be something where it's also kind of like your bonding in like your position groups where it's like if somebody goes after one of the offensive linemen like after the play's over and the defensive lineman keeps going at him you want the other offensive lineman coming in and being like get off my guy like that's that's the type of thing you're kind of encouraging and and practice is these like position groups kind of bonding and then Mm -hmm. naturally the the whole team will have that same level of bonding uh which is what you're looking for um and they kind of transitioned all that um Oh, well, th- there was one thing. I forget who Sala, Sala was talking to one of the, the other coaches or some somebody on the sideline, and the guy was like, now, I, I get the fights, but you don't have to have the benches clear every single time. And Sala yeah. went, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and he's thinking the same thing. He's yeah. like, you want guys jumping in to back up their guys. Because right. in yeah. the next scenario where it's not Jets versus Jets, it's Jets versus – Patriots or Jets versus Bills, you want guys coming in and backing up their guys in those situations. So that's right. just kind of what it goes into. But they kind of transitioned all of that into, uh, which we talked about last week, wanting to see a little bit more uh, Quinn and Williams stuff and basically just showed him demolishing everybody, which ended up being a theme throughout the episode going into the Panthers game and everything. But the one thing I took away is – they were like, oh, they call him cue ball. Have you guys heard that before? I have never heard. No. Maybe that's just a player. No, thing. I had never heard that. I had never but heard. But I like it. It's like wrecking ball, but like it's cue ball. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I had never heard someone call him cue ball. Yeah, they were like, we call him cue ball. And I was like, do we? <laughs> I've only ever called did, him cue. So I guess yeah. a fan. It must it might be a the players thing. It's like well, there is Yeah, a, it must be. There is like what, the cue ball, which is in pool, right? Yeah, but yeah. even if you call a guy cue ball, it's what you call bald head, guy. Yeah, his head shape. Yeah, it's what you call Quinn a bald doesn't guy. Have a shape head. So I'm even like more confused. Now. I think it's just got to be like a wrecking ball. Yeah, cue, and to. then just the fact that cue ball is a term, it's just like I don't know. Yeah. Or yeah, it could be could be in in pool like you hit the cue ball into like the other balls and it just like demolishes them and like sends them flying. Like it could be. Something like that. Like yeah. he's the cue ball that goes flying into the offensive line and knocks everybody down. I don't know. We need like we need like 
you know, like one of the B writers to ask this question this week. Somebody needs to somebody needs to get the, the answer on this. <laughs> what is the, what is the source of the cue ball nickname? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because sports nickname sports nicknames are great. So if we if we had like a good reason behind where it came from, other than just him being Q, that'd be yeah, great to know. Um, but then the the next thing we see is is Aaron Rodgers. Uh, they're in the video room going through film, and they're showing side by sides of Aaron Rodgers on. One play is oh. a play action, and one is an actual run play. And it's at all the guys in the quarterback room trying to guess which one, including Aaron, which one is a an actual play action and which one is a, a run play. And basically what results did, in – go ahead. No, I was going to say, what did Zach say? No, you know what? Continue. Oh, Continue. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I don't want to steal your thunder if this is what you're going to say. No, I don't, I don't have Zach's quote. I know Zach said something like uh, – like oh, like you're giving it away right there, and then Something it turns like out that. that it was the opposite of what Zach had had guessed. And Rogers is like giving it away, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and like just away. totally right. But no, but but no, but Zach chirped Rogers at the beginning of this of this scene, like, and Rogers yeah. turns to him slowly and goes, "What did you just did say?" You say? <laughs> like he, he yeah. couldn't believe yeah. that Zach that Zach was chirping yeah. him. <laughs> It's like he said something that's like like fuck your fake or something like that. Or, yeah, like I was, was a shitty was, fake. I was a bad yeah, was a fake shitty or something fake like that. Or something. And God is just like <laughs> he's, he's like slowly slow turns turn. and he's like, like he's like, what did you just say to me? And Wilson was like, sorry, sorry Dad. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Dad. Zach had a shit eating grin on his face. I was like, all right. He's like, you know what? The cockiness is still there. That's kind yeah. Of he's got it. Yeah. Um. So that's. I mean, just the fact that professional quarterbacks can look at like a screenshot of of a play like that and not know like what's going to happen I don't know maybe again we kind of talked about this last week with us maybe just being like ignorant to some of this stuff and but in my mind it's like oh I feel like with most quarterbacks in the NFL you could tell like there would be some kind of giveaway like something they're doing differently but Rodgers is just so next level that it's just like Mm -hmm. looks identical um and then they moved on to Something I was also – we a couple of guys we talked about, we wanted to see Quinn and Williams, which we got. And another one was Will McDonald, um, who just seems like – I think we already knew it a little bit, but then from from kind of this, this scene we got, we know way more. He's just an incredibly unique guy, totally on like his own wavelength. He was going to get like an eyebrow piercing and like a nose piercing and all this stuff. And it's just the whole thing. I had to like look away at one point. Like yeah, that same. stuff just totally really the eyebrow. The eyebrow is bad where they're like, yeah, yeah, through, the second nose like, yeah. yeah, they yeah. like pinched, all of it was pinched bad. his eyebrow and they like put it through and I like gagged. I was like, all right, I need to, yeah, I need to look away. The I'll best was, did you, did you catch what the, the uh, piercing artist's name was? Yeah, it was no, Bussy. Bussy Bussy Pierce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bussy Pierce. I I like it was, I was like Leo and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I sat up. I was like there's no way that man's name is Bussy Pierce. <laughs> like I lost it. Like I was like Jesus. I was cracking up. But I don't think I don't think I was watching my roommate. I don't think he noticed the name, but I started losing it when I saw yeah, that name. <laughs> so ridiculous. I was like, his name is what? Yeah, like given that the last name's Pierce, maybe it's like a trade name, but still, like no, the first name is just so, so beyond ridiculous. the pale. Yeah, so I, absurd. That has to be a self-given name and not yeah. his. And if it is, uh, yeah, if it I is, so. if that's on his I birth would... certificate, then I got to meet his parents. Just be yeah, like, seriously. what were you thinking here? <laughs> Um, so we see him getting his piercings and then uh, he talks about like his style is kind of like all over the place. And then we get into him playing football and he's a monster, obviously, and is fitting into this defensive line well. And then we we can talk about it now. We see more of him in the in the preseason game. He has a great game against the Panthers. And I after this episode, I'm was already excited about him, but my level of excitement is just like next level. Cause I feel like guys obviously on the field, what we saw is awesome, but the type of guys that have that kind of weird off the field personality, mm. like I feel like it are the guys that are kind of like on a different level because their brain is just like, there's something going on up there. That's not going on with the rest <laughs> of us, which 
is making mm-hmm. him want to get stabbed through the eyebrows. So I'm I'm super excited about Will McDonald. Him and Jermaine Johnson. Yeah. I mean, like, not just on Hard Knocks, but, like, watching the actual – whether it's the game itself or the clips on Twitter from the All-22, those guys are monsters. The, and they, those and they're not Jermaine even – Jermaine Johnson plays were – and they're not the starters. They're not the starters. And it doesn't even really yeah, matter. It's crazy. Because, because, like, on, like, third down, like, third and ten, you're going to throw Quinnen, Huff, uh, like, Jermaine Johnson, and, like, maybe JFM or Will McDonald. Like, they're going to rotate. Lawson, like... Carl Lawson. Like, they're going to, on like, especially on passing downs, you're going to have some crazy athletes out there. Um, and then they have the big boys for the rushing downs. Like, Salah loves to rotate his offensive line and, and basically run it like a hockey team where like you're basically running line shifts, you know, uh, and it's going to be quick, like two or three plays at most. And then you're, it's the next guy's in. And, then, yeah. and there's a lot of substitutions on this defense, which is fine, you know, and, and they've proven that they can do it. They did it last year really, really effectively. Um, this is like, this is Salah's dream. This is like what he had with the 49ers. You know, where he has a guy on Nick Bosa's level, you know, and DeForest Buckner and all these different guys. Like, the Jets have so many guys that can run out there now. It's going to be so much fun to watch. And it's not just Jermaine and Will. It's, like, everybody. It's crazy. Yeah, and that kind of rolls into the next thing, which was the team heading down to South Carolina for uh, joint practices. Um and we saw uh, kind of exactly what Salah said was he said uh, to Quinn and Williams and the rest of the defensive line as they were kind of warming up before practices started, he kept saying, we go as you go. You guys like better bring it because this team, we go as you go. And it's what we ended up seeing in the preseason game is the defensive line absolutely dominated and the team was perfect. I mean, they didn't. The offense looked great. Zach looked great. The defense was perfect. Literally, they didn't score. So, and I think that's kind of going to be like the the way the whole season goes. It's it's what Salah sees in this team. It's like if you can get after the quarterback, you can force turnovers, get three and outs, get other teams off the field. Like we have Aaron Rodgers on the other side, and like even though whatever you can have concerns about what the offensive line is going to be or whatever, we can get into that, but. It's like if, if this defensive line can live up to the potential we think, then like this team is going to be really good. And it's just like where, how far can they go from there? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and we got to remember it's, you never want to, uh, that the, we know we want to remember that the Panthers are going to be very bad this year. That whole division is going to be very bad. The NFC South is yeah. going to be awful. You know, and it's, it's one of those divisions where, whoever wins it, it might be like the NFC West that season when the Seahawks won and they got into the playoffs and they were like seven and nine or something. It might be one of those cases, but we can't let that take away from how good some of those starters looked that were out there. You know, obviously the big name guys, I mean, they haven't said it yet. I I just, I can't picture a scenario in my head where guys like Rogers or Garrett Wilson or sauce or Quinnen are playing I mean, the only time I could see him is maybe on Saturday, but even then, it's just like we know what these guys can do. So, and it's it's like they say, no reason to. There's no reason because we know what they can do. You want to see these other guys. You want to see Will McDonald and what he can do. And obviously, we saw uh, they made a note of it. I think Bob Wischusen says it in Hard Knocks. He was like, they were only they they only had three guys rushing, and Will McDonald still got back there for the sack. Like so, it's yeah. it's these are these are the guys I want to see when there's no pressure and they can just go out there and do it. The Jets were up by like twenty points by that at that point of the game. I'm pretty sure, but still, like I want to see that. Like I I know I Will McDonald isn't going to be in the get like the game as much as he is in the preseason. So I want to see those reps now, and maybe he like, by the end of the season he's in there a lot more. But for now, I want to see what why he was the Jets' first overall pick. And and I loved, I loved seeing in Hard Knocks, um, on that th- that three man rush, I think it was either right after or right before. I think it was a fourth down, or something, and Will like makes the first play, and then he gets up 
and they're like, oh, like they're staying out there. And he's like, oh, I got this one. I got this. Yeah. And then he goes and he gets the sack. I was just like, holy <laughs> shit, man. Like, yeah. This guy's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like he said, he's like, no, I got this. I, I, I got yeah. this. This one's me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so then we get into uh, joint practices. Uh, there was one funny moment where uh, we see josh mccown the legendary josh mccown and uh somebody introduces him to sauce and josh very self-aware josh mccown like first wasn't sure if sauce even like knew who he was it was like yeah i played quarterback for a long time and he's like like 18 19 years something like that (laughs) and then and sauce was like oh that's what's up that's what's up and he was like yeah "Yeah, i'm I'm the type of quarterback if if i was playing now i'd probably be throwing you one and he was just like oh Cool, cool. <laughs> that was that was cool. I was f- former. Uh, hey, listen, when McCown was a Jets quarterback, he had some flashy moments, and we had some fun with him. He had that. Yeah. Was that was it him that the helicopter? The, the helicopter move. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he, Legendary. He had, some, he had some moments, you know. So it was. Those were the seasons where you knew nothing was going to happen because it's like you know you're trying out Josh McCown as your starting quarterback. <laughs> You know, yeah. some dark, those were some dark years. So you might as well have some fun with it. The tail end of the Bulls years. So you, you might yeah. as well just have some fun with it, I guess, at this point. Those were some I mean, if you have like years. A, yes, yes. If you have like a 17-year NFL career, you did something right, man. I'm yeah. not going to – No, no team, disrespect like, to Josh McCown. Yeah. Josh McCown is is an automatic member. He gets an auto bid to first team all finesse because yeah. just the, yeah. the length of that career, you know. Just incredible. Him, Fitzpatrick, I think it, he might not have the longevity. I don't know if he's on a team currently, but Mike Glennon, all team for yeah. Chase for Daniel for, is next up. Chase, Chase Daniel, Daniel Matt is Flynn. next up. Like Mike Matt Glennon Flynn. got that. Matt Flynn made like 30, 20 or thirty million off of one, one game with the Packers. Like yeah. Brock Purdy was trending in that direction, but apparently he's having a terrible camp. Apparently he's already thrown mm. like eleven picks in camp or something like that. So wait, I thought he was like locked in as the starter and is the I guy. I think he is. Like he he's definitely going to be the starter. I think Trey Lance is like completely off the map been, of this. Yeah, I heard he's Trey was horrendous. horrendous. How's our boy Sam? How's our boy he's, Sam he's, doing? He's, some, of the, some of the clips I saw, he looked pretty good. Like I, it's like, and any Jet fan, I, Jesse, you and I have said this. Any Jet fan that roots against Sam Darnold, unless he's in the game playing against the Jets. You have no reason to root against Sam Darnold. The heinous, I love the Sam Darnold. Crime. The heinous franchise crime ruined that. Sam, not the other way around. Like, yep. he had a 2018, the season ended, and we were like, okay, maybe we got something here. Like, he, he ended the season kind of strong. And it was the exact opposite of Wilson, where they started setting him, they started setting Wilson up for success, and he didn't step up to the plate. Darnold couldn't because he had no one. So it was, you know, kind of a uh, disaster. He, had war, he so, had a war criminal number one and war criminal number two as his exactly. GM and head coach. So Exactly. So then if, like, uh, Sam steps in, maybe Brock Purdy shows by, like, week nine that he's not the guy and he was a truly a, or a flash in the pan or he comes off this Tommy John surgery and he's just not the same guy, then why not, Sam? You know? Go for it. Yeah. Deal. I did uh... – Sign me up. Double check. Chase Daniel has five career starts in the NFL and has made forty-one million dollars. Oh, oh, so he has wow. made eight point two million dollars per NFL start. Wow, That's amazing! So some of some of these guys, like we were talking about, like Josh McCown and Mike Glennon, they went through runs where they were like a starting quarterback for a good chunk of seasons or even full seasons. That is like next level to start five career games and still just keep getting those checks. Get so that's bag. unbelievable. Sh- shout out to Chase it. Daniel. Shout out for sure. Yeah. Um, so then uh, it does get into kind of, we we've already kind of referenced it, but the first kind of real negative moment, which came from the offensive line, which has now turned into like the story of the week at practice and everything, really the story of today at practice um, is the offensive line. Just, we saw a moment from Rogers being frustrated where he was like, somebody just block somebody, like, give me a minute. And the coach is getting pissed, Sala going after the offensive line. And then we saw today, uh, 
our pal Ethan was was peppering all of us with these tweets from practice about uh, Rodgers having no time and him just having to throw the ball away and the amount of sacks that the Bucks uh, were getting on the Jets in practice, despite the fact that the Jets had four of their five starters out uh, in practice today. Um, that's an important note to make. Um, I will say it, it probably is the biggest concern on the team. Like not saying that I think it's like uh, we should be in panic mode over this offensive line. But when you look at every single other group, you have Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback. You have maybe the best running back duo in the NFL now that Dalvin Cook has been signed. You have the offensive rookie of the year at wide receiver in addition to other guys that have been really successful. The defense speaks for itself. It's, it's a beast. One guy that's looked great in preseason is Greg the Leg, Legatron. Mm-hmm. He's looked perfect in preseason. So it's and really Morstead. everything top to bottom. Yeah, and, and Thomas Morse said. Everything top to bottom has been basically perfect uh, so far this this preseason, except this offensive line, and, and we got into it a bit there. So where are we on the offensive line? I, I think that there's definitely need for concern when – for like a better part of a week, we've been hearing stories about how poorly the offensive line has been playing. But I think that there's a lot of nuance to it, to this conversation. And I think that there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of factors involved. You know, the main one being four guys were out today. Um, and, or three guys were out and four, the, the fourth, if you are you referring to Becton, like not being part of the, the yeah. starting group yet? Like, so yeah, like Becton, like, I think everybody is rooting for Becton to win that left tackle job. The biggest thing when they, and the beat asked Sala about it today is that Becton's not going to get any first team reps until he can show that he can play a full game. Because it's not fair to the rest of the players, guys who can play a full game, yeah. losing reps to a, like, it doesn't make sense strategically to give reps to guys to a guy who we don't know if he can last a full game compared to guys who we know can play. So you're kind of just like, all right, like these are the guys I like the best availability is the best ability is availability in the NFL, right? That's the old adage. So, like, we're waiting on Beckton. And so far from what we've seen in, in camp um, and what we've heard, mainly what we've heard, because none of us have been to training camp, but what we've heard and what we've seen through hard knocks is that he's been playing well. It's just he's only been gotten, like, a maximum of 25 snaps in the game. Yeah. So, like, we need to see another week or two of him, like, building himself up, and then hopefully he just takes that starting left tackle job from Dwayne Brown, who hasn't even practiced yet. Um, I, I can't see myself being a huge like, – and also, like, I don't want to move Dwayne Brown to left to right tackle either. Dwayne, I just think, should just be a backup. Um, and sucks for him. He's 38 and wants to compete for a title. But uh, He's I got a busted shoulder. Like, yeah, it's... like, I think Beckton's going to be the best bet. Um, Langan Tomlinson's a former pro bowler who's going to have a good year, I think, with Rodgers. Um, I think that – we're going to have AVT back, and worst-case scenario, he plays a right tackle, but that honestly might be best-case scenario, actually, because he was fantastic at all That's three positions I'm, he I'm played thinking. last year, right? And then, like, you don't want Max Mitchell at right guard, right tackle. Like, it, he, he's been getting smoked all camp from what I've been reading. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, he's playing better, but still not what you want. Um, and then, like, like, I saw, like, today maybe someone, like, they, people were like, all right, like, you'll put – Titman at right guard, McGovern at center, AVT at right tackle, and then Brown at left tackle until Beckton can prove he can play a full a full game and like actually is okay he can play. Because like like I don't I don't anticipate us like seeing Beckton getting in and being like, wow, Carl Lawson just blew past and Kai Beckton again, which is what we saw two years ago. Just right. over and over and over again. Beckton getting smoked. Um he lost the weight. Like he's in his best best athletic shape of his life. Um, I'm expecting him to be able to keep up with defensive ends now. Um, so what I want is Beckton at left tackle, left guard to be Lincoln Tomlinson, center to be McGovern, Titman to be right guard, and AVT to be right tackle for now uh, until we can find somebody who can play like right tackle because Beckton can't. Like he can't. He can't move that way. That's this surgically repaired knee. You don't want him just constantly putting pressure on that. And it was clear he's just not as good at that position as left tackle. Right. So those are the five I want. And we'll see if we get it. I don't know who you guys, if you guys have any 
variations of that five, but it's definitely a problem right now. But as Roger said today, like he, he was asked about it also. And I, I don't remember the, it was a long quote. I don't remember the exact thing, but he said, right. As of right now, he's okay. Like he, there, there's no rush as of right now. There's still a bunch of weeks of, of training camp left. They got like an, a month until the season starts. They have a lot of time to figure this stuff out. It doesn't seem like it a lot of time, but that's four weeks. It's a lot of time to figure mm. this out. And he was like, I just need a week. I just need a week with five guys. That's all I need. Right. So, you know what? You have you have three weeks to figure this out, Jets. You have three weeks. And then the last week, you got to have Aaron practicing with the, with the right group. Because that's all that matters. Him having chemistry and be, uh, them all being on the same page. So, the main takeaway, we need Beckton to just get back to game shape. And it should be okay. But that's Hope a big so. should. Like, Rodgers' like, ability to get the ball out of his hands quickly is going to help this offensive line for sure. Yeah. You know? But I, – Yeah. He, like he also said, yeah. needs, he, like, he also needs to be able to get the ball out of his hand, and there's only, it's only, he can only get it out of his hand so quickly, right? And if Brian, Brian Burns and Shaq Barrett are just getting into the backfield like this, who are two of the best pass rushers in the NFL for what it's worth, still, like, you need to give Aaron time to let anything develop. You know, if you if you miss that throw on first down, you're throwing on second again most likely, and mm-hmm. then if you're not, you're running the ball up the middle and you're third and long, and. In the past, we've had Zach Wilson and Sam Darnold and Ryan Fitzpatrick and Mark Sanchez. Where when you get in that third long situation, you're like, fuck, their drive's over. Now, like, Rodgers, like, I, I have the utmost confidence that Rodgers can complete a third and seven. Like, right. that's just who he is. That's his MO. He completes those. That's why he's a Hall of Famer. So it's obviously going to be different for us this year. Um, like, the conversation is different in the past, different now than it has been in the past with the offensive line because of the Hall of Fame quarterback factor. But man, um, they need some continuity quick uh, because right now it certainly isn't working. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's the sorry. Big... Sorry for the long spiel there, but you know. <laughs> no, I think what you said, I I like that that unit that you listed out. I think as of now, that sounds to be that seems to be the 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 best unit that they probably could put out there. But like you were saying, like Roger said, I think unit cohesion. And getting these guys set quickly is like the most important thing. Figuring out who's going to be these this unit soon is the most important thing. Because I heard, and it's not Dad. If you're listening, I love you. He's like the king of you know, and he's right. Games are won in the trenches. We all know this. He's always like the, when the Dalvin Cook thing came down the pipe, and I'm still ambivalent about the Cook signing. But he was still like, we should use the money for an offensive lineman. I still people see people on Twitter saying it too. It's like, there's no one out there for Joe Douglas to go and sign right now that you're using that money on that is going to immediately improve the offensive line. It's not going to happen. There's just no yeah. one there. If you want to improve the saw, offensive line with a new player, he's got to make a trade. So we saw, who is who is that court that pat former that former quarterback who's like a Packers guy now, Kurt Be- Be- Beckhart or something. Ber- Berhart, no. he's like a Twitter guy. He played for like like a couple different NFL teams. Played five years in the league, and he like was on a podcast with I think Kay Adams. I think he was mm-hmm. on with on Up and Adams, and he was like, "Yeah, keep an eye out for Bakhtiari to the Jets." Yeah, I heard that. Too. Which I it's that'd been be like a dream. That would be that'd be. I've been talking day. about it all summer, but yeah, exactly. I mean, um, <laughs> listen, it would be great that, if you want to keep that, bringing guys that over. Joe obviously, is and just looking into just really keep making this the New York Packers or the Green Bay Jets, however you want to call them. Sure, bring them on. Let's like, do it. it. It's not going to hurt the offensive line. Hell yeah, bring them in. No, like no, you know I think I think those are our five most talented guys. The guys that that you listed originally, and seeing Titman getting action at right guard I was happy about because I wanted Tipman to be playing. They said he wasn't quite ready to be in NFL center right away, which is fine. It's a big jump from being ready to be an NFL right guard and being an NFL center. That's a completely next level of mental and all sorts of levels of, yeah. of preparation yeah. you need to have. So if he can be ready to go to, from a pure physical go block your guy perspective at right guard, like I'm, I'm totally happy with that. I've always hated people diminishing the importance of center. Right. Um, I, I think it's the second most important position on 
the, sorry, the third most important, or sorry, the second most important position in the offensive line, like the fourth most important position on the, in the entire offense, in my opinion, because of how it like, obviously like Rogers is, you know, Rogers and you're not going to necessarily need a, a veteran center to be pointing out like coverages because you have Aaron doing that too. But like, it, like Blake, like you said, it is a next level position where you need to be on top of everything. You need to know where everybody is on the field. You're already crouched down, and mm-hmm. you're stuck between two like two guys on either side, two giant humans. You got a, a guy's hands in your in your on, like basically <laughs> on your ass, like, and you have to be like hyper aware of who's coming at you and being in communi- communication with the quarterback. Like outside of left tackle, quarterback, and like wide receiver one probably it's and maybe even more important than wide receiver one you know if you have the quarterback figured out I, I just think it's such an underrated position in football and people like were like oh center who cares about center it doesn't matter no i, I think it matters a lot it's like, mm, yeah you can't oh like as in like you know connor mcgovern is keeping that job even though titman's like a high draft pick mcgovern's gonna keep that job maybe out of necessity because we need him to play right tackle titman but it's not like Tibbins like winning this job from the veteran. It's right. a tough and, thing to do. And they made a point to say that it, Liv Schreiber made a point to say that it's like the quarterback center relationship is one of the most important in the game. And some would say, what did you say? It's like, some would say it's rather intimate because they're talking about him having his hands <laughs> like between yeah. Yeah. and stuff like that. And that's where I was like, what I mentioned before with Rogers and you said it was Schweitzer. Uh, yeah. I said McGovern, but him, Snap, like getting the snaps and stuff like that. He's like, don't spin it, do all that. Yes, yeah, so Schweitzer is just, clearly not going to be a clearly center. not going to be the center. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think Rogers is meshing with him in that position. So, no, and and Robert Sala said it best in that speech that we talked about at the beginning. He's looking at tape and he said, "Defense, our style was all over this bitch yesterday." And he said, "But none of it matters until the big boys up front change the fuck who we are." Yeah, And he's right. I mean, we know what we have in the defense. They're going to dominate against a lot of teams. And Rodgers is going to be Rodgers, but nothing is, is going to change until the offensive line just basically mans up and is, like, ready to to be the guys that we need them to be. Um, it's a shame. In our lifetime, our, these Jets teams just can't put it all together. Like, the 9 and 2010 teams, they had, like, every position group was elite except for the pass rush. Hmm. Now we have every position group's elite except for the offensive line. Like, just give us just one, give us just one. once, just <laughs> once. Do you, think, uh, do you think Nick Mangold would be ready to go? If we gave him a call. We suit him. How quickly, uh, how quickly can he Brick? get in, in game shape? Well, we need get, more uh, like we need Damian Woody at right tackle. That's what we need. <laughs> can we get? I think we can get a uh, Debrick show on the line. Get him back yeah, out yeah. here. I, I, you know? I bet in. In four weeks, they could be in shape, ready to go. By the way, that is um, one of my most like wild statistics I've ever heard about professional football player. The fact that Debrinker Shaw Ferguson never missed a game. Like, it's insane. Yeah, it's on the snap. offensive line. It's he played crazy. on the offensive line in the NFL. Like, it just like you can get rolled up on. You know, you got guys falling all over you who are like mm-hmm. the same weight and size as you, and you never miss a game. God bless that man. Those long ass arms that yeah. kept them kept everybody away from him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the so the next thing we saw was the rookie show, which this is a uh, hard knocks tradition. We see this with every team on hard knocks. The rookies oh, have to God. go up and give some kind of performance. And to be fair, these guys are always doomed from the start. Like they're never going to be happy with what you do. That's yeah. part of the rookie right. show. Is that Aiden, Aiden you're gonna get killed it last year? He did. You got to be perfect. If you crush it, then then they'll love it. But you're you're starting. You're not starting even. You're starting way like way behind yeah. the eight ball, and you got to be perfect for them to be like, all right, you nailed it. And these guys did not nail it. Uh, they they came in <laughs> trying to do some yeah. like stripes style, like everybody comes up and like introduces themselves with some like funny nickname oh, and say like, wait, some- you didn't recognize that. No, what was it? It was Stomp the Yard, man. Was it that? It was uh, Stomp the Yard. They did, the yard they, did the, they, they did the whole scene from Stomp the Yard. Oh, like, I didn't everybody, know. I was <laughs> honestly really impressed. I was like, wow, they put a lot of effort into this. Like, they they got that whole introduction scene from Stomp the Yard down. 
And then it just went way down. Way down from there. <laughs> way down. Well, yeah, they were already not happy with that. It makes more sense then if that's if it was like a direct uh yeah uh recap or redo of that scene. But then they tried to do like one of those like jackbox games yeah, or yep. whatever where you're like everybody has to scan the QR. It's like you shouldn't make them be like scanning and like typing Don't make in them work. like they they tried to do like a oh it's who's th- this guy and everybody's like oh, it's Michael Carter and it's like the most popular guest and they they're getting the paper balls rained down on them. There clearly was a, a supply of paper balls because they were a paper airplane. They were, <laughs> yeah, they were flying in. Huh? These guys it were was, getting peppered. It was it was a disaster. I, I was cringing so hard. I was like, this is like what I like would like. I've played this game with like my girlfriend and her friends like from yeah. school. Like that's not yeah. like a a game you play, and we like drink wine and we laugh. Like that's not like a a game you play with a bunch of <laughs> yeah, professional no. football players. <laughs> I was um, losing it. I was like, I can't believe. Like that's such a gen. What is it? Is this the most recent one? Gen Z? Is that the most recent? Yeah, one? they're Gen Z. The rookies. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I that is so. the most like Gen Z. <laughs> like idea I've ever seen. I hope these rookies just get relentlessly shat on for the rest of their lives. I love it was like all from the perspective of Nicole Hardman too, because he's yeah, he's got the big sunglasses on and he's just like, what yeah, what's going he... on, man? <laughs> yeah, he's like, this is the phone. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> and it uh, it ended with C.J. Mosley standing up and saying they have to do it again next week because That's it wasn't right. good enough. They're gonna have That's to right. run it back with a brand new performance. So I guess we'll see. In next week's episode, these guys give it another shot, doing something else. You basically just have to do something like you can't try to be like cute or because it's kind of like what we're talking about. Like they're probably going to try to shit on you. Like they want you to do something where they can make fun of you. Like that's the goal. And so just do something where you're just like basically embarrassing yourself, like Mm -hmm. sing a song that's like embarrassing for you to be singing. Maybe come in and like go maybe hot in the streets go with the barbie theme like come in and like can outfits and do yeah. like a stupid like song or something like idea. basically it, it something either... where you're just embarrassing yourself because what they want is just to be able to make fun of you so just let them do it you either need to do that or you have an actual like legitimate talent that will wow people like Aiden yeah. Hutchinson like Aiden sang Hutchinson. La- I what what did he sing last year it was amazing I forget what it was. I don't remember the song. He he built it, or maybe it was a rap that he did, and he memorized the whole thing. Either way, he killed it. Either you do, either you have have a real. Yeah, he did Billy Jean. Yeah, Uh, acapella, which was really impressive, and like he he like he did a really good job. You have to do that, or like you said, Blake, like go full Barbie, embarrass yourself. Yeah, and uh they they definitely embarrass themselves just not in the right way yeah in a bad way where it's like not even fun to make fun of them it's just like uh that sucked um so then that was the last thing we saw before we got into the actual game um which we've already talked about uh a good amount but um just a couple moments that we saw uh was zach wilson before the game started on the sideline and i forget who it was he was talking to maybe the quarterback's coach or something but he was just like, hey, man, just like relax. I think he was actually talking to Jeff Ulbrich, which is weird, was the defensive weird. coordinator. But he was talking to, and Ulbrich was like, hey, man, just go out there and have fun. Like you, you deserve this. Like you deserve this chance. Like just go out there. And Zach, you could almost see himself like trying to just like cool off. And he literally said, like, I want to have fun playing football. Like he's almost trying to tell himself, like, dude, just relax. Like you psych yourself out too much. Just go out there and have fun. And uh he ended up playing well so i think cool he was moment. doing i actually think he was doing a family guy bit it's was from it? the uh it's the episode where like peter takes lois golfing and she's like well peter you hit your ball in the water and like <laughs> why and he's like because it's fun we're having fun you know like <laughs> yeah <out>. that's what <laughs> he's like whether it's a it's reference fun. or not we're having fun <laughs> exactly what he was doing yeah um and uh then, I mean, I'm assuming anybody that's listening to this watched the game. It was basically the defensive line show, like we talked about. Jermaine Johnson, Will McDonald kind of being the stars of that, but everybody just getting after Bryce Young and then Mac Corral once he came in, just taking former SEC quarterbacks out. Um, mm-hmm. 
which was very cool to see. Um, and then one moment at the end that I liked was was Aaron Rodgers going up to Makai Becton, which we had just kind of talked about Becton, and basically like going up and giving him a hug and being like, I love you, man. Like you did great mm-hmm. today. Like you should be proud of yourself. And the thing that made me the happiest of this whole episode was Aaron Rodgers saying to Makai Becton, like, hey, man, let's talk soon. Like, you want to get lunch? Like, let's go get lunch soon. And I love because Makai Becton clearly coming into the NFL did not have the best attitude. Um, He did not come ready to basically be an NFL starter. Um, Injury issues obviously haven't helped, but I think mentally he was not as mature as, as we would have hoped. And having Zach Wilson as your quarterback and kind of leader you're looking up to is not who you want for a young guy who kind of like needs like the kick in the ass to be like, come on, man, like you have all this talent and all the, everything in the world. You just need to kind of go out and put the effort in and, and then you can be the guy. And so the fact that Aaron Rodgers clearly sees that too, and is like trying to take him under his wing a bit was, was my favorite moment of the whole episode. Yeah. That was really great was, to see, just because I. It was great. Yeah, because I mean, we are we all are rooting for Becton. It's the guy's coming from two years off the field, and he went and played in the stadium. I mean, it, there's something to be said for it, where he got hurt, and it was his last yeah. game that he played, like in a, in a live game scenario, was in that stadium, and it was Zach Wilson's first game of his career in that stadium. So it was. It's, there's something to be said, I guess, for probably in Becton's mind going back out there. I'm sure he was just like, you know, this is where uh, the past two years kind of like where everything started to go downhill for me in a lot of ways. But I'm here and I'm trying to get back to where I was and where I know I can be. And to have a guy like Rogers in your corner and being like, yeah, let's let's get this together. I want you to be the guy. I want you to be on the guy on the line that's helping to protect me. And I want to help you get there too. So, you know, I, I, I want to really see, I'd love to see them like go in depth on Beckton in the next mm. week or so. That'd be really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, one other thing I wanted to bring up. Um, I love our, we got a Ron Middleton moment. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which yeah. was more like in jest <laughs> to him because it was right after uh, Kuntz scored that touchdown and Rogers is like, you ran the wrong route. He ran the wrong route. Ran the wrong route. Ran the wrong route. And he like, just nice goes coaching. up to Ron. He nice just coaching. goes up to Ron and he goes, yeah, nice coaching, Ron. He ran the wrong route for a touchdown. Nice coaching. Over and just <laughs> relentlessly just destroying him. <laughs> and Ron's just standing there like, all right, I'm just going to take right. this. But he's, he's cracking up. He's like, all right, it's, what am I going to say to Aaron Rodgers? Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I, I love that. Uh-huh. And we need, we need more Ron Middleton. Yes. I we agree. Are seriously deprived I, of Ron Middleton content so far. Well, a lot of what we asked for last week, Quinn and Williams, Will McDonald, some of that stuff we asked for and we got it this week. So I think we're going to keep getting that kind of stuff uh, going forward. We had one, one moment that, which is always funny to see that like the players are watching this too. We had a, a post game moment with uh, Johnny Hecker, the punter, uh, mm. which I guess he's the punter for the Panthers now. I didn't even realize that, but. Um, and him and Tanzel Smart were teammates on the Rams, so I guess they know each other from that. Johnny H- Hecker clearly watched the first episode because he went to Tanzel Smart after the game, and he was like, "Hey, man, you gonna get me a coochie board?" Was <laughs> 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 the, the the perfect callback to the first episode by by uh, Johnny Hecker? So that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, you gonna get me a coochie um, board? <laughs> oh, that's so good. Um, so that was it for the game. Uh, the very last thing we saw, it was kind of like a post credit scene kind of thing was, uh, the offense getting a Leslie Nielsen education from Aaron Rodgers and, uh, uh, the coaches kind of going through like the naked gun and airplane and like all these things. And, then it was a very funny moment afterwards where it's like show shows like one of the guys on the field, like afterwards talking to another player and being like, Hey man, you know, uh, Leslie Nielsen, the guy from airplane. And then he's like, he gives like a quote from the movies like, man, that's funny, huh? 
And so uh, Aaron Rodgers and Hackett are trying to give the uh, young guys a, a classical movie education, which yeah. they said it was like a cinema Sunday or something. Like they're going to be that. doing this once a week, giving these guys a, a lesson and some classic movies. As so a film head, was... I, I very much appreciate that. A, a cinephile, if you will. I, I very <laughs> much appreciate these coaches trying to give our, our young quarterbacks our offense some culture. And it's a good Let's start. Hear. Airplanes, uh, airplanes, yeah. a top ten comedy of all time. So, I mean, how can you, I, you know, shout, out, yeah. shout out Leslie Nielsen. Uh, yeah. R.I.P. 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 Big, and big don't rip. call me Shirley. Um, big rip. So that was it for episode two. Uh, just running through one jet's drive really quick. There were a couple moments again. One jet's drive. I think we talked about it last week. It's definitely going to be overshadowed every week. We had kind of talked before the first episode about how we were excited about one jet's drive and thought maybe it would be better than hard knocks. I think that take is very obviously wrong. The hard knocks episodes have been much better, uh, but a couple of moments from one jet's drive. Um, it started with Michael Clemens in total Zen mode, which we saw at the end of the first episode, they kind of teased it. And then went more into it um, with, I guess, like a mental coach that works for the team and kind of helps these guys like with meditation and these things. Um, He talked about how he was a straight up alpha um, and people are afraid of him. And uh, then they showed him an interview, which is one of the most terrifying things I've seen in my (laughs) life. They were like, Michael, you seem like this calm, pretty reserved guy off the field. And then on the field, we know you just kind of turn into a beast like how do you kind of turn that off and on and he just sits there in silence for like five full seconds and that's like the suspense build and then he just goes and doesn't say anything just snaps it's like holy shit like, this oh guy my god is, uh if i was that reporter i'd be like is he gonna kill me right now like, what <laughs> Is that a stupid question? Is he gonna? Is he about to murder? Yeah. Right now? yeah. I, I'd ask. I'd, uh, if I was interviewing him, I would ask him a question to be like, "I'm sorry, by the way. I apologize." Yeah. Um, yeah. So, some of the reporters before, be like, even before he answers, just be like, yeah. "By the way, I apologize. Yeah. I'm sorry." Some other reporter. My boss me, told me to ask yeah. this question. I don't know, I'm it's sorry. stupid. Sorry. He it's just texted stupid me, stuff. but like, yeah, yeah. Like, like one of the other beat reporters. Actually, he like, pointed the like, guy next to you. He actually wanted to ask the question, but they called on me, so I just said yeah. it for him. It was his question. Rich Samini lost his voice, but he yeah. but he wanted me to ask you this question. <laughs> not yeah. to not to give not to give each guy on the Jets a different character from the Longest Yard, as I did last week with um, Quinnen and Swatowski, yeah. but he he's definitely. Uh, the great the guy the great Kali plays. Oh yeah, the the, the ping pong guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's like, oh like yeah, the, yeah. They get him yeah, from like yeah. solitary confinement or whatever. He's like, yeah, Papa John's <laughs> playing safety, and Clemens <laughs> is like, I play. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I guess one Jets drive is a little bit behind, maybe just because it comes out a night sooner. But we saw the Hall of Fame game stuff in this episode that we saw in the last episode of Hard Knocks, so. We don't really need to go over that, but seeing the team like tour the Hall of Fame museum and some of that stuff was cool. Um, we saw the highlights of the game. We saw some stuff with with Corey Davis, who I feel like has kind of been forgotten about in all this mix, yeah. partially because we all, I guess, I think we're pretty sure that he was going to get traded. Um, he was one of those contracts that seemed like a prime contract to dump for this team, mm-hmm. but they kept him. And honestly, the fact that he's here, like, I, I think with Aaron Rodgers, he can have a really good year. Like he's incredibly talented. He's going to have probably when he's on the field, like the third best corner on the other team guarding him, who I think he's better than a lot of those guys. So, um, but seeing those family moments is always cool. Like it's cool that I don't know what the situation was, but the team lets them have their kids on the field for certain parts of, of the day and, having them around I'm sure for certain guys is very like grounding. Um, So that was nice to see. Uh, But really the only thing from one jets drive that we didn't get from hard knocks was some Jason Brownlee content, which he has been one of the standouts um, of training camp and of the entire off season. I think maybe the last few days that seems to have maybe fallen off a little bit, which is, upsetting but um hoping he at least gets a practice squad spot because for a guy 
that was an undrafted free agent seems like an absolute steal and a lot of talent. And we obviously have a, a loaded room, but not to cut um, you off real quick, but is Strev was in the quarterback room, wasn't he? When they were doing I think that, they may have like, brought him back because he was on the sideline for that Carolina game. Yeah, because like, yeah. he, he's on like their the injured list or something like that. So I guess that's why oh, he's maybe. Still yeah. there. Because he got By hurt, way, I remember. So Brownlee's my guy. No, I never covered him. That is my that is the, the school I covered, Southern Miss. So oh, anybody nice. from Southern Miss. Anybody from Southern Miss I'm rooting for. Though always I always your guy. I always my guy. But I do think um I don't think he'll, he's going to make the team. I think it's, it's looking yeah. like Malik Taylor is going to make it over he's him. Going to make it over him, yeah. Yeah, but Brownlee, I mean, he he would join. Uh, he would join. I think there's only two other offensive starter or offensive players in the league from Southern Miss right now, and it's. Cause I think Edo Smith is gone. I think it's, um, Quez Watkins, and then Nick Mullins. So Brownlee, mm-hmm. if he makes the team, he'd be like the third guy. I think. Anyway, continue. Yeah, I, I oh, hope he at least makes Southern the. <laughs> yeah, I hope he at least makes the practice squad and maybe get Strev on the practice squad if he's if he's willing to do that. Um, keep him around. Um, and then they showed some of the joint practices. Um, the only moment that we kind of saw that I thought was a cool moment that we didn't get um, in Hard Knocks was Jermaine Johnson talking to Brian Burns, who we mm-hmm. referenced earlier, one of the best pass rushers in the NFL and Jermaine Johnson basically going up to him and being like, what did you do there? Like the way you had your hips, like the way you turned and very cool to see that like a guy like Brian Burns, who's like a a veteran in the NFL and like a um, absolute monster is willing to like talk to a young guy on another team and be like, Oh yeah, this is what I was doing. And like, uh, so that was, that was probably the coolest moment from that. Um, Yeah. I've definitely gotten the sense and I've never really, had an idea of it before because I've never really gotten behind the scenes like this with the Jets or anything really. I don't really watch Hard Knocks that much if it's not the Jets. It seems like guys are really willing to like help each other out with technique, but when it comes to scheme, that's off the that's not like on the table at all. But when it comes to technique, it feels like that's like something that they're willing to like help each other with, which I found really interesting because you would think like this is their craft. Like why are they going to give away trade secrets? Right, you know, it's well, what makes also, them so good. The guys but it's are, interesting. Like, yeah, Brian, like Brian Burns giving it to Jermaine Johnson. It's like it's not like Brian Burns is ever going to have to use this against Jermaine Johnson. So it's like, yeah, true. Why not? You know, it's like if he was giving yeah. it to an offensive lineman, it'd be like, all right, I don't know what you, why you're telling Brian, Brian Burns. I don't know why you're telling him that, but Jermaine Johnson is probably just like looking at it like, you know, yeah, I can learn from one of the league's best, and he's willing to kind of give me these tips and. Jermaine Johnson, I think I posted it uh, during the game. It's like he switched numbers and he became like he became like Lawrence Taylor in his prime. <laughs> he just he yeah. just looks really good. Out He's there. been a beast. He's just been yeah. Been eleven awesome. eleven looks better than fifty two anyway. Yeah, I think so too. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. unfor- unfortunately, we're not playing Carolina, so I guess Brian doesn't you know yeah. feel any need to like be like yeah hey, you know like I'm not going to give any tips for playing right. this year. I think it, if they were playing Carolina during the regular season, maybe it wouldn't be so. If if yeah. if Jermaine Johnson was like on the Falcons, I don't think he's maybe yeah, giving those exactly. tips out. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's like, I don't think we're seeing you in the Super Bowl, man. So like, it's good. <laughs> yeah, we're good. not this year. But maybe we're a couple years from now, I don't know. But definitely not yeah. this year. <laughs> um, so that was it for uh, second episode of One Jets Drive. Second episode of Hard Knocks. Obviously, one big thing that happened in in the Jets world, which this really is. Uh, a hard knocks recap podcast not a jets podcast so we can save it for next week because we will be seeing dalvin cook on hard knocks next week but that's just a a little teaser we we saw him at practice videos of him at practice this week so that's something we can uh dive into next week when we see him arrive but very exciting times another great episode of hard knocks do you guys have any uh final thoughts uh, I mean, I saw some camera. I mean, I saw a quick picture or like a little video of Dalvin getting off the private jet, and oh. saw the hard knock cameras were there. So I mean, I, I mean, you you, you got to assume that they'd be there, but it's nice to see that they're there. And we're gonna get a lot of Dalvin Cook next week, which will be cool. Yeah, um, for sure. I, I think it's just like you 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 said it already, Blake. But just to reiterate, hard knocks is just way better 
It's just been a way better product than one Jets drive so far. Um, it was very interesting to see like that they included Hall of Fame game stuff. I guess I kind of forgot that they didn't. Like maybe, yeah. like, maybe I, I guess the first episode of One Jets Drive they focused a lot more on before training camp. Like they did the Rogers interview, right? Like Tahoe and everything. But they didn't really get into the first game. It was like the first week or so of practice, and then I guess they started with the Hall of Fame trip this year. Yeah, we, we already talked about it, but that was definitely interesting. It's just like not – the hype isn't the same either now. Like I don't really – I'm not looking forward to Mondays. I'm looking forward to Tuesdays. Right. Like Mondays is like, oh, cool, like more Jets content, like some behind-the-scenes stuff. I'm obviously going to watch. You know, and it's still good. It's still a good product. It's just, you know, Hard Knocks is just up here and One Jets Drive is like still high, but like it's just, you know, mid-tier in the right. middle. And Hard Knocks, is, Hard Knocks is showing more of the – they're not like dressing things up. It's more like objective. You, like you could yeah. see, like or during the regular season when the Jets are bad, like during when the last portion of the season, I don't even know if they made a one Jets drive. Like when right. they're losing, they don't really make episodes. So it's it's obvious. I mean, it's made by the Jets. It's Jets propaganda. We watch it because we want yeah. to see the content, and we understand that it's not a you know it's whatever. Because I mean, comparing Rogers in the one Jets drive portion of things, you know. I think like one of the sections with him is him like surprising the kid with special needs and signing like his jersey and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, that's what players should do. And like Rogers is who he is. And then you compare that to him in Hard Knocks and uh, Hard Knocks, and it's like, yeah, two different guys. But that's the Rogers you want to see on the field. The yeah, the guy. You're not going to see that on One Jets Drive because they also can't curse on One Jets Drive. So. Right. You're, they're not. They're <laughs> not going to be showing Rogers running up to the Carolina defensive line coach and being like. <laughs> What's up, you piece of shit? You fucking you, bad, you piece, bad piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're not. They have to yeah, censor that whole scene out if they want. It's to. just not. The, yeah, it's just not the same. Like they're just. It's. It's very obvious that like. Yeah, one's prop. Like, I don't want to use the word propaganda. It's like marketing. It's like. Yeah, it's all it is. It's yeah. like it's like it's internal documentary detailing the off season, which is cool. Right. And That's when fine, the and you're going season... to see cool stuff, but right. yeah. And when the regular season rolls around and Hard Knocks is finished with, then One Jets Drive will, will love it again. And that's not saying I'm not enjoying One Jets Drive, but yeah, yeah. compared to Hard Knocks, it's you can't really compare the two. Listen, there's going to be One no Jets shortage Drive. of Jets coverage this year in any network, so we're going to have plenty no. of content to consume. Exactly. No, One Whether Jets Drive is, is uh, the movie Bohemian Rhapsody. It's a, it was a fun movie. It's a good movie. But you could tell that Brian May was just standing over the editor's shoulder the whole time being like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't put that in. You cut that scene out. It's 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 propaganda, but it's, it's getting too it's real. A great propaganda. Get that out it's a great, anal- yeah. great analogy. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so we'll take it. Um, uh, but that's it for episode two. We'll be back with another one of these next week. Um, I don't know where you're consuming this if you're listening, but uh, it's up on my youtube channel blakey locks on youtube uh so you can watch it there if you're listening it's on the jet stream podcast feed wherever you find that so make sure you subscribe to both of those and do all that stuff and uh yeah thanks for listening